Great. Are you think, do you think that there are things that prevent people from getting involved that you could be able to do something about? Well, interestingly, I had a letter only about two weeks ago from a, a young a young woman who is, I think she's seven, she's 18, I believe, and she um, she's a, an asylum seeker. <clears throat> her case hasn't been decided yet. She's here with her family. And she is desperate to volunteer. She's finished her schooling. She can't go to university because she's waiting for the asylum case to be determined. She could have a couple of years hanging around. And she really, really wants to volunteer. And she can't because... She really wants to volunteer with children, but to do anything with children, she has to have a CRB check, and she can't get a CRB check because she has no forms of identification, because she's an asylum seeker. Now, she has loads of time on her hands, she's incredibly bright, she's really articulate, and she's absolutely dead keen, and it just seems crazy that people can't use her, that she can't, you know, she can't get involved in the way she wants to. And I think there are, there are definitely... Um, elements of bureaucracy that get in the way and I think CRB checks and um, some of the safeguarding um, young people goes too far. It's putting people off. They're not putting themselves forward. The hassle of having to get the CRB check, the intrusion, you know, the, it's, it is putting people off and I think there are, there are a lot of things around sort of the regulation around volunteering, a lot of which is there for very, you know, good intentions but actually is, is going too far and is sort of starting to block people who would otherwise put themselves forward or who would otherwise be able to to dedicate a lot of time. Great. Um, <coughs> one of the things we've picked up that there's been quite a lot of debate about recently is whether volunteers should be rewarded for their efforts. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whether it's something like Rock Corps, where young people having done some volunteering yeah. get to do something together in the form of attending a gig or a, a major concert, or the 25th hour campaign, which is about giving people the potential to win tickets to yep. Olympic event type stuff. Um, what do you think about those sorts of incentivization? It's really things? interesting. I mean, I don't have I don't have any objection. You know, I think encouraging people to give up their time in some ways. I think sometimes people need a little bit of a kick in the in the beginning, and if it, if they start doing something because they think they might get a ticket to a you know, to the Olympics or a rock gig or something like that. But actually they then discover that they get a huge amount out of it and they really enjoy it. And then they build a sort of lifelong relationship with that organisation. Actually, it's worth sort of incentivising people at the beginning. But I do think that we need to be very careful about um, not making it look as if you're getting paid for doing volunteering. And not only for the you know the really basic things like minimum wage and things like that but actually the whole point of volunteering is that it's additional it's on top you don't get volunteers to replace paid staff you don't get volunteers to replace something that you would otherwise be paying for and it's additional and it's because people want to do it for the sake of it so it's getting the balance getting the balance right and actually i think in some ways having having it so that the incentive isn't really related to what they're, what they're doing in their volunteering is quite a good way of doing it. So it doesn't look as if they're either getting paid for it or they're doing it because this is the end result. But actually, you know, what they're doing is completely not linked to, to the benefit that they might potentially get. It's quite a good way because I think it, it sort of it breaks the, the link enough that it, it, it doesn't sort of cloud the issue too much. You mentioned additionality there. Mm. And um, one of the things, because I've almost run out of questions, I want anything else, <laughs> it's quite useful, is that I've been picking up and we've been picking up quite a lot of concern that cuts in Absolutely. spending are likely to lead to public services requiring more volunteers. Yeah. And obviously at the moment there are enormous numbers of volunteers involved in public service delivery yeah. in all three sectors. Yeah. Um, but what do you foresee happening in terms of volunteering within public service delivery? It is, it is a really worrying... I, I think that the, the issue of additionality is really, really important, and I think it's absolutely fundamental. I am a believer in uh, the, the third sector being able to deliver public services because I think they do a really good job in a lot of ways, in a lot of areas, and, and, and in particular niches where I think they have something to offer that other organisations don't. However... 
it has to be on a full cost recovery basis because it's not that, that we can't think about using the third sector as a cheap way of delivering public services. That is absolutely not how it should be seen. And we can't have it so that people who would otherwise be paid members of staff are replaced by volunteers. That's not that's not how it should operate either. And that the, the if we are going to be uh, delivering public services through the third sector, then it has to be properly funded and it has to be looked at uh, in the same way that you you know you wouldn't cut the budget of of a private sector organisation expecting to deliver the same service and we shouldn't do the same we shouldn't do that to the third sector either. Um, it is one of my concerns with the with the way that the with what the Tories are proposing at this election around the big society, is that they are looking at making massive cuts in public expenditure, whilst and and talking about sort of getting uh, contracting out to, to the third sector in particular and it seems to me that they are using that as a way to then um, save money and it shouldn't be the third sector deserves just as decent funding as as the private sector and the public sector and the, the work that they they do and the the additional benefit that they offer must be seen in that context and they must be properly funded to be able to do that and I imagine therefore that means the same for volunteering within the public sector itself. Yes. Because so many public services absolutely. run by government bodies locally and nationally are also very they dependent have a lot of, on volunteers. Absolutely. And the thing is that, that what volunteers do is, is over and above what paid staff do, mm. and that's what makes it so special. And I think if we start losing that, then actually you kind of take away... I think then it takes away from volunteers what it is that they're doing, because actually then what they're they're working towards is effectively state provision of something and it's seen as a job and then why on earth would they give up their time for free when actually it's not adding anything extra and the people that are volunteering currently in the public sector and their sector as well but as you said there's lots of people in the public sector who, who volunteer but they're adding something different and something else that, that wouldn't otherwise be provided and I think that's that's what makes it special and that's what's really important to, to keep that and to actually value the fact that it's it is over and above and that what they're doing is is different and is making a, a, a difference to people in the, sort of, but it's not considered as a statutory obligation it's not that they have to provide it it's because they want to provide it and it makes a difference thank you and finally is there anything you'd like to say to the volunteering movement here in great britain i think you're all <laughs> fab <laughs> i think society wouldn't work if we didn't have people volunteering and i um I was, I was getting slightly frustrated on listening to the radio last week when they was, there was somebody was saying, oh, politicians don't understand how many people volunteer in the UK. I thought, absolute nonsense. <laughs> Most, you know, political parties depend on volunteers. Public services depend on volunteers. We all come across volunteers, you know, every day of the week. And it's, it's absolutely amazing how many, how much the British economy depends on volunteers, how much our communities depend on volunteers. And how generous people are with their time and their skills and you know I'd like to see more people getting involved and, and encourage more people to do it but that's not to diminish the achievements and the benefits that, that people who currently do volunteer bring to our society and our society wouldn't be anywhere half as good as it is and our communities wouldn't be anywhere near as vibrant as they are if we didn't have people who spend hours of their lives volunteering in all sorts of different ways and, and making making our communities what they are. Jenny, thank you very, very much for your Pleasure. time.